The idea that Adolf Hitler was a Christian is not only a common myth but a bad one. A number of current atheist writers have said that Hitler was a Christian. True, Hitler was born a Catholic Christian, just as Stalin was born an Eastern Christian, but neither of them took Christianity seriously after their early youth, and both worked covertly and overtly to destroy it. Hitler's views were shaped by nationalism, militarism, nihilism, Wagnerian romantic neo-paganism and social Darwinism, which consisted largely of racist ideas, of improving humanity by exalting the strong and destroying the weak. Hitler was obsessed by anti-Semitism. He loathed Jews, and he also despised Christianity, partly because of its Jewish roots and partly because it taught love and forgiveness rather than power. He believed that Christianity had weakened the German nation, and thus contributed to its loss in World War I. After coming to power in 1933, Hitler tolerated the churches until he had a firm grip on society, which he had fairly well established by 1934 through 1935. At the same time, he promoted a new sort of religion that mixed a small amount of Christianity with a great deal of neo-paganism. By 1937 this new faith had attracted more than a million adherents. It allowed people to feel they were being spiritual and at the same time supporting the Fuhrer. What you won't hear in history class is that Hitler wasn't just out to eliminate the Jews. He wanted to get rid of Christianity as well. Hitler youth leader Balder von Schirach admitted the destruction of Christianity was explicitly recognized as a purpose of the National Socialist Movement and here's Nazi leader Alfred Rosenberg, a member of Hitler's inner circle. I am absolutely clear in my own mind, and I think I can speak for the Fuhrer as well, that both the Catholic and Protestant churches must vanish from the life of our people. Martin Bormann, one of Hitler's closest and most influential aides, declared that National Socialism and Christianity were irreconcilable and Hitler himself said that Christianity was a religion of fools and old women. Hitler declared, the heaviest blow that ever struck humanity was the coming of Christianity. The deliberate lie in the matter of religion was introduced into the world by Christianity. Christian youth movements, both Protestant and Catholic, were suppressed and replaced by the Hitler Youth. From 1938 the term Yuletide was preferred to Christmas and carols and nativity scenes were barred from schools. Hitler's intent was to suppress all loyalty in society except that which focused on himself and the Nazi party. Hitler was the absolute source of all authority, and could not tolerate any other sort of allegiance. To say Heil Hitler was an act of faith commitment. The term Heil was not only a greeting, it also implied salvation. The traditional German word for Christ is Heilen, the Savior. Given Hitler's inherent antipathy toward Christianity, the reaction of the churches to his programs was notably pathetic. In 1933, at the beginning of Hitler's reign, Pope Pius XI naively signed a Concordat, a formal agreement with the Nazis, which he soon regretted. The Protestant Barman Declaration of 1934, which reaffirmed that Christ is above all earthly rulers, had little effect. There were a few great heroes such as the Protestant pastor Martin Niemler, who spent years in a concentration camp. The priest Maximilian Kolb, who was fatally injected at Auschwitz. The Catholic farmer Franz Jägerstur, who was beheaded. And the Protestant pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was hanged in prison. In 1935 the Nazis arrested 700 Protestant ministers for opposing racism, and that example served as a chilling deterrent. In 1937, Pius XI issued the encyclical Meet Brennan der Sorge which means with burning concern, denouncing Nazi atrocities, oppression of the churches and Nazism itself as fundamentally unchristian. He ordered the encyclical to be read from all Catholic pulpits in Germany on March 21st of that year, but by then it was too late. On the whole, 
Catholic and Protestant leaders posed only a weak and ineffective opposition to the persecution of the Jews and political dissenters, even to the suppression and corruption of their own churches. In his multi-volume History of the Third Reich, historian Richard Evans writes that the Nazis regarded the churches as the strongest and toughest reservoirs of ideological opposition to the principles they believed in. Clergy regarded as troublemakers were ordered not to preach, hundreds of them were imprisoned, and many were simply murdered. Churches were under constant Gestapo surveillance. The Nazis closed religious schools, forced Christian organizations to disband, dismissed civil servants who were practicing Christians, confiscated church property, and censored religious newspapers. As Hitler grew more powerful, his religious tolerance disappeared, and he tried to replace Christianity with a new Reich Church, a religion in which there was no God but Hitler. I think after a while, Hitler begins to believe in Hitler. His fellow Nazis were only too happy to embrace the Fuhrer as Germany's Messiah. It is only on one or two exceptional points that Christ and Hitler stand comparison. For Hitler is far too big a man to be compared with one so petty. Our Fuhrer is the intermediary between his people and the throne of God. Everything the Fuhrer utters is religion in the highest sense. And since every religion needs a house of worship, Hitler developed a 30-point plan for the new National Reich Church. It was even published in the New York Times in 1942. Among the rules, no pastors, chaplains, or priests were allowed to speak in church. Only National Reich orators. All Bibles and pictures of saints were removed from the church altars and replaced with copies of Mein Kampf. The cross was also removed and replaced with the swastika. 1942, the Bible became a banned book in Germany. Hitler had his own Bible printed, 100,000 copies. There are some copies still around, but most of them were destroyed by people who realized what Hitler had done. In Hitler's Bible, all Hebrew words, like hallelujah, were removed. He also replaced the Ten Commandments with 12 of his own. Among them, keep the blood pure and your honor holy. Maintain and multiply the heritage of your forefathers. Joyously serve the people with work and sacrifice. Honor your Fuhrer and Master. Hitler also wrote his own version of the Lord's Prayer to be recited by the Hitler Youth. Adolf Hitler, you are our great Fuhrer. Thy name makes the enemy tremble. Thy third right comes, thy will alone is law upon the earth. Let us hear daily thy voice and order us by thy leadership, for we will obey to the end and even with our lives. We praise thee, hail Hitler, Fuhrer my Fuhrer, given me by God. Protect and preserve my life for long. I thank you for my daily bread. Be with me for a long time. Do not leave me, Fuhrer my Fuhrer, my faith, my light, Hail, my Führer. Hitler had his own church, his own Bible, and even his own hymn, sung every day in German schools. 